I want to buy a copy of Bone Storm. Here's 99 cents. Uh, allow me to summarize the proposed transaction. You wish to purchase Bone Storm for 99 cents. Net profit to me, negative $59. Oh, oh, please take my $59. I don't want it. It's yours. Uh, uh, uh. Welcome back to the Thinking Critical Comic Book Podcast. This is your host, Wes, and it's time for the second episode of Slabbed and Raw, the comic collector's showcase here on Thinking Critical. We're going to talk about all of your comic collecting needs, wants, tips, all that good stuff. We've even got some pictures from, I think it's Jimmy Jam Boogie sent some pictures in of his collection. We're going to talk about that at the end. If you have pictures that you want us to talk about, maybe you want to show off your collection, or if you have questions like, hey, is has this uh, comic book been altered? Has it been trimmed? Is this going to affect the grade? Send those pictures in to us at westdigscomics at gmail.com and we will talk about them here on the channel when, when we get a chance. And obviously here with me are my nerds to talk about <laughs> all the comic book collecting stuff. We've got basically the co-host of Slabbed and Raw the critical curmudgeon. Paley, how you doing? Hey, good morning. Uh, yeah, I'm doing pretty well. Uh... A lot of weird things happening this week in collecting. Uh, new records have been broken, and uh, collecting is doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. It's it seems to be picking up steam going into the summer, and uh, I've got I'm pretty excited about that. Awesome. Next up, we've got from Fantastic Comics in Berkeley, California. He used to be the heel of thinking critical comic book you too, but uh, Doc's kind of taking that one. How you doing, Yule? Just well, that- Yule. Uh, just fuel. Uh, well, uh, actually, I'm still a heel in the states. It's more like overseas, across the pond. He's doing That's the Bret Hart is. thing, where he's he's a baby face in the U.S., but overseas, everyone hates Doc. That's right. So I, I've still got you know the the U.S. going strong. He's still got heat in the U.S. <laughs> uh, I'm doing well, and I agree with Pele. Uh, prices just keep uh, new records are being uh, going up on collecting comics and it's crazy uh, absolutely yeah <laughs> well, next up last but not least we've got the x-men historian the marvel aficionado a guy that's got a pretty decent comic book collection himself doc how you doing buddy i'm great i'm i'm not even gonna make fun of any foreigners this week <laughs> hey Aww. you did it yesterday so technically <laughs> you already well, did it this week <laughs> no no today's sunday today's the first day of the week all right. Well, yeah, the, the show will be on the channel Monday, at least for now. We'll, <laughs> Another we might first day of the, the week, depending. <laughs> the, the future of the show potentially being live here at the end if we have time. So let's get into the first topic, fellas. A lot of people have great raw comics. The name of the channel is Slabbed and Raw. And perhaps it's time to get those things slabbed as you see the prices uh, skyrocketing. And having your graded comics is going to have a... Uh, hold a lot more value, especially once you get into those like nine, six, nine, eight rage comics. And we do have somebody that is associated with a grading service. His name is Pele. Pele, mm-hmm. what's up with uh, getting your comic slab, getting them graded? What, what's oh, the it's... process? What are the, what are the options out there? Uh, uh, right now it's kind of a little bit of a nightmare uh, as far as wait times. Uh, CGC is, I love CGC. Uh, they're not perfect. But I love them. They're they're a great company. Uh, but it's it's taken five to six months now, unless you unless you get a comic expedited, and maybe even longer. And uh, but uh, there's there's other is that other an indication options. that they're doing a, a not doing as good a job, or that the demand is just so high? Oh, demand that it's backed them up. Yes. Yeah, demand, demand. You know, it's just it's it's so you know they they hired ton of new people they they basically tripled their grading staff and you know and they they've, they've done everything they possibly can you know short of you know opening up brand new facilities all over the country which is probably what they'll have to do next uh but uh, uh there's other companies available cbcs is great uh pgx isn't uh egs <laughs> is another decent <laughs> EGS is another decent option. They're getting more popular now, but uh, the process uh, to get it graded, there's there's a couple different ways you can go about that. Uh, one is you can get an account yourself with PG with CGC or CBCS, and uh, you pay a you pay a fee. Uh, it it depends on the tier that you want to be in. Uh, if you get into the professional tiers, I think it's about two hundred bucks. If you is that a in, monthly or a yearly fee? Yearly. It's an annual fee. Uh, 
or you can go in at the the you know just the enthusiast level you don't get you don't get any as far as any bonuses or anything like that but uh you do get uh the ability to submit yourself and uh and you become a member and get notifications and crap like that but uh i think what, it's kind like 50, of, what are bonuses 50 Does that 60 mean bucks if you send in enough comics you get some discounts yeah yeah if you have the professional tiers uh stuff like that you can get like a certain you get a certain percentage like 10 percent off you know of all your grading fees um there used to be better bonuses but cgc is like you know we there's no reason to do that anymore people well, that are coincided, driving, driving is crazy that coincided with them hiring a, a ton of new people also right their yeah. prices have changed as a result and their wait times have changed as a result also yeah now, and and the fact they doubled just about everybody's salaries. So, you know, it's... Yeah, uh, yeah. so Doc, I, I had... You do not... Hold on. You don't have a comic book <laughs> shop, but you used to have your own account. What tier did you go on, and was it worth the price? Um, I went... Yeah, I mean, I, I've ha- I had... Up until a couple of years ago, I since I stopped submitting as much, um, I did have the... At the time, it was the $150 account. Um, I think it was, I think it was a professional grade because it was like 80 bucks for a enthusiast grade, but you didn't get anything. And back then you, if you got the, uh, the enthus or the professional grade for 150, they sent you a gift card for six submissions, which is, which costs 150 bucks because they were 25 bucks a piece back then for, for submission. So yeah. you basically got you, you pay but that's you not just the way had it to do six anymore. no they've they've changed it um I, I don't know what the the different i mean Pele explained what the different tiers of membership are i mean i still have my membership i just don't have the paid membership anymore because once you have it you don't really like lose it you just can't submit anymore mm. now if i want to submit personally if i want to submit i can either go back and get the paid account again at whatever the price is these days and the uh the whatever benefits i get or i can submit through a shop that is yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna get that but doc was it worth the money how many comics did you need to submit for you to think that it was worth the annual fee as just a uh, regular dude well i mean yeah i mean as as long as i did six books i mean as long as i had six books to to grade at the same time i get the membership send it off it basically gave me six books free which was the cost of each submission if i were to submit through a store so yeah it was absolutely worth it back then i i don't know if it's if it's worth it so much anymore at least for the for the non-vendor um if you're if you're vending even a little bit even if you're just selling books a little bit on the side like on ebay or at um a local show then yeah, it's probably still worth it, um, rather than paying elsewhere. Um, but yeah, I'd say I'd say it was definitely worth it. I, I definitely got my money's worth. Um, I didn't do any pre-screening. Um, How much do you have to pay if you go to your shop? Uh, that, uh, that varies. That varies yeah, a lot. Your shop. shop. Well, your um, shop. at my shop locally, it was about five bucks extra. So it was about 30 bucks per book for the the basic economy tier for modern books. So it's 25 bucks to submit yourself. It was about 30 bucks to submit through a store. So it it charges me an extra five bucks. So if I were to do the same same thing and go through a store, it would have cost me 180 bucks instead of 150 bucks that I got basically for free. I mean, after I paid my, I paid the membership fee, and then they gave me my membership fee back in store. Yeah, credit, but that not, that option's not available anymore. But you're going to pay a five dollar yeah. ex- extra if you want to go through your shop in your area. Yeah, it was about yeah, it was about five bucks extra. I know some shops charge more, some charge less, um, some charge the same price as it would be for just going, you know, yourself because they get that bulk discount they get 10 percent or 20 percent off by submitting and then your books go in with 25 other uh you know store customers their books as well as the books at the store and the store might be submitting 100 books at a time and four of them are yours 
Yeah. Yeah, we uh, we don't like my shop, we don't charge if you're a good customer, if you're a folder customer, you're, you know, you've got a you got a subscription through us. Uh you you know, you get a pull, you have a pull list and you keep it up to date. <laughs> That's important. You keep it up to date. Uh we don't charge we don't charge for CDC submissions. Uh you just pay the fee whatever it costs and uh pay a portion of the shipping charge which is pretty negligible. Uh, if you if you have several books, it's almost non-existent. And then, you know, you if you want it pressed now, if you want it cleaned and pressed with that, uh, we have we have uh, different tiers. It could range anywhere from fifteen dollars a book to you know whatever, depending on how badly the book's messed up and how what we have to do to it. But uh, it's you know we do that. A lot of shops don't. It just depends on the volume that you send in to to get to get graded. So. So Yule here in the yeah. Philippines, my shop that I was using in Manila, or I, I get my graphic novels there still. I don't really do. I, I'm mostly digital now, but they would do a like CGC day quarterly, mm. and they would have a pretty substantial fee. Do you have like CGC day to where everyone comes in and they get the comics that you want to send off graded, or can they just bring them in at any time? No, they can. Or bring do you not in. have that service? No, we we do CGC at our store also. Uh, only recently within the last few years have we really started taking advantage of it every once in a while we'd have something really special come in and we'd send some stuff in of course you have your your uh your yearly re-up so you know you send stuff in for that but um uh now we're doing it i have never done like the the mass quantity one and we have a ton of comics out there right now some customers some hours and it's like paley says um we we charge a little bit probably like 10 bucks a book maybe uh we we make you and we've been dealing with a lot of people with expensive books so it's kind of a uh you want to you want the shipping to be insured, insured and all that other stuff so you know it, it can be more brought with us in that regard but um we try and do a very good job packaging and you know being very professional when it comes to that so uh yeah we totally have that service and and i think the cgc stuff is fine it's just uh just waiting you got to remember 90 business days ain't 90 days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Weekends and holidays. And so CBS has much, been a lot faster, too, lately. Right. So. How much can you increase the, the value of your comic book just by getting it slapped? If it's um, in the high stratosphere of, uh, of grades, the most worthless comic book is all of a sudden worth a crap ton of money. And a uh, 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 it's it's very important to get these things slabbed if you want to turn them over and make money off of them for sure. Hey, how important is it if you want to preserve the comic? Yeah, that's that's one of the key things, really, because we're seeing a lot of we're seeing a lot of problems as far as gold and silver age. You know, they're starting to turn brittle. You know, and uh, just left on their own, and because uh, they oxidize. I mean, this is this is the crappiest paper that they could find. I mean, Jeez. it's. You know, it it's not disposable. meant to last. Yeah, these were disposable entertainment, so you know they never were intended to be here 50, 60, 100 years for you know from when they were published. And uh, somebody was somebody on uh, Twitter was you know, I was talking with you know saying, you know, I said the late eighties pulp comics are the worst because it was before they switched over to the slick paper uh, for the interiors. They are the worst because they are like onion skin thin that that pulp they figured out you know how to make it just as thin as they possibly could like and rolling I, paper. I i i'm seriously you could almost they're almost transparent on some issues <laughs> and it's like started about late 87 uh into you know in the late 80s around late 87s when it got worse and uh i opened up a uh it was asm 316 first cover appearance of venom and that sucker was already tan uh, if you look at the, the the overstreet color thing you've got you know your white pages your off-white cream this book was already tan inside and like what in the hell happened to this and he goes i don't know i just kept it with my other you know stuff I'm like it's getting bad with those and uh, i'm telling people if you got your your asm keys from that era other other marvel specifically marvel dc didn't seem to have as much of this problem 
but specifically Marvel from that time, get them slabbed. At least get you some microchannel paper and, and put it in those books and try to stop that process because a lot of those books, and they were pumped out. They're talking about books that were published in the hundreds of thousands, but they're not going to last. They're going to turn brittle, and there's going to be very few of them that are going It'll to be survive. be good for people that have them slabbed. Yeah, you get them slabbed, get them taken care of now. You know, if you don't want to go slabbing, get you some of the microchannel paper, uh, microchamber, you know, paper that absorbs the acid, stuff like that. Do some of that yourself. Seal them in mylar. And because 10 to 15, 20 years from now, those books just are not going to exist. People are going to open the covers on them and the pages are going to start chip, just Dust. falling apart. <laughs> so start specking hard on late 80s Marvel. Yeah, so it's not crazy uh. <laughs> you have an update you went and checked out the website you can still get yeah. the premium membership for 149 with the 150 dollars with the cgc credits so if you get six comics graded you get you essentially you get your money back i just have one more question as far as being not a shop doing it as a personal account was it a foreboding process to get your comic down there like uh, is it worth the time and, and the headache involved in, in getting um, it shipped down there and and the insurance and everything. You know what? I, I would say it's it's not foreboding. It's 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 eminently reasonable if you have any ability to pack comics like properly. I mean, granted, you have to be able to pack and ship your comics properly. You don't want to cheap out on your on your postage going down. Uh, you know, they're gonna package it well coming back to you. But you don't want to do a manila wanna, envelope. No, no manila envelopes. I mean, <laughs> not without it, boards in between them. <laughs> Gemini mailers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, the the G Gemini mailers plus, um, you know, I I always every time I rebag and board stuff, I keep the old boards, even though, and I toss the bags, um, and I use those, and I'll put five or six of those as like a backing on either side, and basically make a like a cardboard sandwich. Yeah. for my books and you know tape them up real good leave the little bubble tabs wrap. on the end yeah and then i'll then i'll put them in bubble wrap and, yeah. and then i'll put them into the i mean sometimes i'll do the um the gemini mailers sometimes i'll depending on how much i'm doing sometimes i'll do a gemini mailers then bubble wrap then into one of like the usps um flat rate mm -hmm. shipping shipping boxes um and then I ship it with insurance and everything. And, you know, yeah, it's going to cost me a couple extra bucks. Um, I mean, it might cost me 20 bucks to get it down there, but honestly, it's worth it. You're increasing the value to such a degree By that the significantly, <laughs> oh, yeah. as long Depending as, as long top. as you're, yeah. And as long as your grading, you know, your personal grading skills are up to the task that you, you know, you're not looking at something that's an obvious seven and going, yeah, this is a nine, eight. <laughs> and shipping it off and wasting your money, but yeah, if yeah. you're looking from a if you're looking for a difference between a seven and a seven point five, it's not really there. But if you're the difference between a nine six and a nine eight in a in a key is insane. It could be doubled a lot of times. It's crazy. So you, it's really worth it to make sure it doesn't get dinged, you know, damaged, dented. And right, like, let's say you think you got a nine eight, and you send it down there, and he comes back in nine six. Are you taking that some bitch out of the slab and trying to fix it? <laughs> No, not usually. Uh, it depends on what it is. Uh, if it's a if it's a big key worth thousands, and if I can, I'm like, oh man, look, somebody put a little finger bend or something like that in it. That SOB is coming out. You know, I'm going to crack that <laughs> slab. I'm going to press it. You know, I've I've there's there's stories. I've posted stories on Twitter about sending a book four freaking times. It's an ASM one twenty nine. I sent that SOB four times because it's like nine four. Then it came back. It came back nine two. Then a nine four. Then a nine six. And I'm like, I just keep going, keep pressing, keep you know, keep you know, doing my magic on it. And uh, finally, I just said hell with it. And I I put it in the I put it in for long for a long heat cycle. Cycled it like three times. I you know made sure uh, I'd cleaned it all really really with a magnifying glass. And then. You know, then let it for a long cool down time for like I think it's four or five days, and uh, then I you know went through all the trouble, everything like that. It just just tried to carefully as carefully as I could ship it and send it down there, and finally got a nine eight. Wow. 
Wow. And uh, it was a lot of work. (laughs) That was a lot of work. It's about two hundred dollars, you know, too, Mm -hmm. you know, to go through all that process. But the difference between a nine six and a nine eight on a ASM one twenty nine is, you know, at the time was like like a thousand bucks. And now it's like three thousand bucks. So (laughs) Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy what happens when you get that nine eight. It's a magic thing. You know? yeah, it is. It's, like, it's just it's it's so hard to like if you're not looking at the numbers. Like, what was the last sale of something that was a nine four? And then you're like nine six. Should we send this in if it's a nine six? I don't know, but if it comes back a nine eight, it's worth <laughs> so much money. Yeah. <laughs> when you when you get your grade back, does do you get like a little worksheet that tells you the the def- defects that that caused it to be a nine six rather than a nine eight? You can go and look at it on the online. Uh, it does not come unless it's something really weird, like a green label, like a, you get a green paper was a qualified label. Like this is a major defect. It's not going to be listed on the label, but you can go online. It's got a little code. You can scan it, and uh, you can see. And it'll take you to the page, and you can look at the the right the greater's, the greater's notes. notes. Yeah. As now, just to interject here, as unless you have a membership. Mm-hmm. You can only look up the graders notes for books that you have submitted under your membership. So you have to have a paid membership with submission privileges so that you can submit it and then you get free graders notes. Otherwise, say if I submit it through Yule's store, I'd have to ask Yule to dig up the graders notes for the book that he submitted to me for they on, used to on have my it. behalf. They they used to have it as long as you had the CGC number on the book. Uh, it was if five you paid bucks. them like five bucks, you could you know you could know, know the notes on any book. That would be yeah, worth no. it to see if you could fix it. You can now. Yeah. You could still you could still buy the graders notes for five bucks, mm-hmm. but if you like for the stuff that you submit, unless you submit it yourself, if you if you're submitting it through a third party, that third party, whoever's that account that is they get the free graders notes you have to get yeah. it from them so just yeah. a fair do, warning for everybody i do that a lot with uh heritage auctions or comic link or anything even on some of the ebay auctions i'll take the i'll take the number and i'll pay the five bucks you know if it's like a thousand dollar book or something like that what's the graders notes on this <laughs> I'll look at it like, yeah. oh shit there's a tear there's Carfax. a page tear i don't want that you right. know i can't fix that yes yeah, so. and not only that but you know let's just say like uh uh you know how I feel about the book. Some people might not care about a tear as opposed to like a a cover crease or something like that. And getting the greater notes is good for that, also. Mm-hmm. You know, what are you willing to live with as far as a defect? <laughs> it really is. Absolutely. So, is there anything else that you needed to dive into as far as grading and, and getting your comic slab pay like before we move on to the next topic? CBCS is a good option, and you can pay less time. Uh, it's it's about the same price, maybe a couple bucks cheaper. Uh, they've really improved. I think that the slabs look better than they used Does to. Does it affect the value though? Is it worth? Less? Not like it used to. Not like it used to. Used to it was like twenty five percent difference between a CGC graded and a CBCS. Now it's about five, maybe so ten percent. It is there a little bit. It is <laughs> there, but you know you have to wait all that extra time. And if you're not really reselling. I would just go with CBCS. Yeah. I would agree with that also because uh, I feel like their quality is the thing is is a subjective. Not mm-hmm. unlike you know what you're willing to put up with in your comic condition. Uh, it's hard to get two people to say the same thing about one thing, you know. And then you have CBCS is coming in. They're really closing the gap when it comes to grading and stuff like that. And I agree. If you're going to do it for your personal collection, that's just the way to go. If you're looking to resell it, though, most people, if you have the same grade book, CGC and CBCS, the only reason why you're buying the CBCS is because you can't afford the CGC. Or or you don't want to wait the time. You know, well, I mean, if it's just there to buy. You know, these yeah, two books yeah. are set right next to each other. You know, one's going to be a $300 book and one's going to be a $500 book and or CBCS, whatever it comes out yeah. to. It's CBCS. They 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 make no bones about it. They say we use the Overstreet grading guide. Mm-hmm. You know that's how we grade books, going mm-hmm. strict Overstreet. CGC says, well, we use kind of use the Overstreet guide, but we have our own 
scale on things and that's kind of nebulous weird kind of thing More i love cgc but you know and it's like well it's not subject they, they have an outline exactly but they don't, don't share it, it with is. everybody yes they don't share it with everybody and it's like no i don't i don't really like, like that aspect. criteria that i'm being graded on it, there's, absolutely there's videos of people say they're gonna send their comics back in or they don't agree with the cgc grade all the time <laughs> mm-hmm. all the time uh, one last CBCS thing they do signatures without authentication absolutely and so that's the other reason to do it yep all right so yeah. we got a couple more topics to, to get into talking about slabbing and collecting uh, you know in, important comic books let's say you know we do have DC black label that's producing like magazine style or size comic books you know they I think they're called prestige plus format but we've had a lot of these back in the day you know just as far as treasury editions crime horror mystery pulp magazines how do you get these graded Pele is, is it a pain in the butt oh doc doc is the one that was talking about that online let's go ahead and oh oh um, no 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 he was he's no. the one that brought it up no, um, yeah, to the best of my knowledge, I do not believe CGC grades because they cannot slab. They don't have a slab in the right format for old treasury editions. And these yeah. were, especially in the 70s and through the early 80s, these were common ways that they would do OGNs, um, but, but that weren't that long format or... Um, Kind of oversized collected, collected editions yeah oversized collected editions um some special books like that uh superman muhammad ali mm-hmm. uh, you know the i think there was a spider-man versus superman one um uh, you know there was the legendary they, star you know, wars these large yeah that legendary star wars one um they they were common it was common but and they're still out there you can still get them all the time now i believe they do magazine size yeah uh but treasury edition to the best of my knowledge they still don't have a have a slab for they never designed one which is strange to me personally um because they've redesigned the standard slab for the you know your standard comic format slab like five or six times over the last 15 years yet they've never designed a single slab for treasury editions and treasury editions they're hard to keep in good shape they're they're hard to bag they're hard to board they're definitely hard to store um Mm -hmm. i had to lean on those when i was a kid when i was reading reading it you know elbows on the book you know that type of thing (laughs) yeah yeah those are ruined out there Now, CBCS does the treasuries, but only they only encapsulate them in mylar. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't get them like in a hard shell case. They will they'll put them in a spe- you know the the treasury edition size mylar and with a backing board, and they'll give you a grade. They'll put a little sticker on the outside of it and, and put a little seal over the flap. You know, to it's a quality seal and the, the camper seal. It's really no different than what Dynamic Forces used to do right. for their you know signed editions with a certificate of authenticity yeah but you do get that great you know yeah but a heat gun will uh take care of that that let's talk about forest and comet let's do it doc what other tips you got (laughs) oh i mean i mean that that, no no you're 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 right though um it's without but that's kind of the point of encapsulation it seals it in there you can't they're tamper proof you can't uh open it back up and then close it back together it's not like a clamshell for a you know an action figure where you can open it and close it or a toy these are meant to be sealed and then stay sealed when you crack them open they're not they're not going back together i mean maybe you could try to figure out a way to plastic weld them but i'm pretty sure it'd be noticeable well, oh, scammers yeah. have tried. <laughs> They've been trying. I've gotten probably a half dozen of them in the last couple of years. Right, we got to do a whole show tampered. on, on oh, yeah. tampered oh, yeah. to look out for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's that, crazy oh, stuff. There is we'll more talk. scams than you will ever know what to do with in comics. Oh, my God, man. It's nuts. I will right, we'll do a whole scams episode. <laughs> it's like some so, wild shit. Anyway, go Apparently, if you're skeptical like Doc on 
CB or the other the alternative to, to getting your book slapped because it's an only a mylar. What do you do to keep your treasury editions in good shape and protected? Oh Lord, that's 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 always the problem too. It I, mylar. Uh, I I there are Same thing treasury edition <laughs> boards. There are treasury edition boards. You know, all triple quadruple board. You know, inside of a mylar, and then. Uh, and then just pray i'll put them up in a really safe place make sure that they don't get damaged uh but uh that's really the only option right now there i mean i'm sure that somebody could like come down with a case or something like that i've not seen one yet a case but uh be a hefty one be a hefty one especially if that stuff eventually gets slabbed i know how do you price that kind of stuff paley if if most of these aren't aren't really graded and even if they are graded, there's the the potential of tampering. Yeah, I mean, it's how do you it's, price that stuff? Just by grade, you have to know what you're looking at. Uh, the uh, I mean, the price guides, they you know, there's all the online price guides do give prices for the treasury editions. They do track the values of them. That's good. Uh, and uh, Go Collect does track the CBCS values for the ones that are graded, even though they're not slabbed. Uh, so at least there's that. Uh, but uh, you know, and remain, and I've talked with CGC about this before too. And like, why don't you do? Because the tooling to to go up to that, they don't believe it. The actual amount that they would get to be it's for grading be worth the investment would pay. The investment would not pay off, is what they believe. And I'm like, seriously, I've got like, I personally have like 40, 50 treasuries. I'd love to get slabbed. You know, I'm sure that there's a ton of collectors all over the world that would love to do this and it would pay for itself but they're just not convinced eventually i think that them or cbcs will have to maybe uh treasury additions haven't got into the hands of the people that are more willing to uh, slab them actually right now mm-hmm. so if you are in a possessor of these things and even if they're in top you know mint condition and you don't really read them that much you might not be going and caring about uh slabbing them because you're not looking to sell them um you know it is kind of a new it's a new kid's game for the most part this uh cdc slabbing and and the wheeling and dealing the way things are going these days and uh treasury editions are for old people and are, not they, until, good, are they good investments oh, yeah awesome man if you can get cheap them now. yeah comparatively cheap. comparatively yeah. cheap right now but they're going to be hard to find in good condition, like like we said. You know, uh, kids like the corners are all turned in, and uh, it's it's bad paper. You know, it's newsprint, yeah. oversized. And they probably printed less than their their floppy counterparts. Oh, you know, less. I don't oh, know what yeah. the circulation is on those, but yeah, yeah, probably at the time quite a lot less. Yeah. Uh, you're looking at print runs of the the Star Wars Treasury and the first edition, the first print of it, uh, which is the most iconic Treasury of all. Uh, it's got two of, two of them. You've got the regular print, and you've got the Warner. You know, you've got the 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 little Whitman. W on there. Whitman, the Whitman, Whitman reprint, yeah. and uh, the Whitman's actually worth more because there's a lot fewer of them. But uh, they're that particular book. Yeah, you know, I could buy them all day. You know, when they came in uh, for like. 10 15 bucks you know mm-hmm. they weren't that expensive now near mint copies are going for 250 300 bucks you know if you get a really nice near mint plus you know copy you know they're, they're going for some decent money now so i'll just say that if i'm looking as a customer to buy a treasury edition i would not give a penny more than a raw for a graded one on these because i don't trust the, the grading on it i don't trust the encapsulation um i believe it's too easy to essentially scam so i trust my own grading or whatever the store is grading it as uh, i treat it like it was raw i i think buying treasury uh in person is really the only way to do it <laughs> yeah. so it really is be something. a pain anyway you know it really is something because they're they're i like the experience of the treasury editions and then you get to like special artwork like on that star wars you flip it over it's beautiful you know group picture of you know all the cast of star wars you know on the back of it it's beautiful and uh like i've got one copy of it it's gorgeous book it would be a nine eight absolutely perfect flip it over and there's a coffee ring right over leia's head well i mean that's when it comes 
when it comes to CBCS and CGC, I think one of the reasons why they haven't really got into it is because it is ostensibly a dead format. Yeah, um, we've we've seen the a couple of years ago whenever the uh, uh, the ones from the guy from or cartoonist kayfabe when he did the uh, X Men Piscor yeah Ed Piscor the Ed Piscor X Men a uh, couple of two issue the the trilogy of two issue books uh, that he did they released those instead of in a standard trade they released them in a treasury format mm-hmm. so. That is that's but that's the only time I think that I've seen a treasury format released in 25 years, 30 years. Um, so, yeah, it is ostensibly a dead format. And so whereas unlike, say, Golden Age to Silver Age to Bronze Age to Modern Age comics, there's not really I mean, you're dealing with like a quarter inch, half inch difference in overall you know, sizing on the book, mm-hmm. whereas Treasury is a significantly different sizing than even magazines. Yeah. And Life Magazine, there's there's even some people that are trying to get Life Magazines and stuff like that graded. And mm. uh, that's... Like Reader's that's a, Digest? Yeah. Uh, well, actually, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, no. The, the Life Magazines, TV they guy. were huge. Mm-hmm. They're monsters. They are. I mean, huge. They were coffee table books. That's the bags that we would use for like Raw magazine and uh, and like Treasury editions and stuff like that. Uh, Said Raw magazine. I thought you meant WWF. No, uh, uh, Spiegelman Raw. Uh, <laughs> they would be like or or Acme Novelty Library. Some of those were really big, also, and so that's why you need Life magazine bags in the store. <laughs> I want to I kind of want to touch on pulp magazines oh, uh, real quick from the twenties and thirties and stuff like that because that stuff's getting really popular now. Really, As, you know, and they, you know, there's no grading service for those yet, and uh, maybe, the, and I think there probably should be because they predate a lot of them predate comics. And uh, some really interesting artwork in those. They weren't comic books, but they're illustrated stories. And uh, a lot of that stuff, I mean, I got some in. I didn't know if they would move. You know, I bought a collection of them, and my God, they blew out. You know, people are like, oh, man, this is from 1929? And it's only 80 bucks? You know, look at the condition. It's nice. And it was gone. And uh, that's going to be changing, too, as people go back, you know, and comic books get more and more expensive people are going to get a lot more comic book like things mm-hmm. and uh that's gonna that's really gonna that's really gaining in popularity and from what i've old time collectors but is there going to be enough of a supply right to justify a demand for a service exactly for, for like a professional grading system now granted they could use the same overall yeah. you know uh you know, grading standards. I mean, yeah. a, a magazine, a comic, they're all, they're all the same. It's just depends on how big it is. It's yeah. just most the of them. Most of them are like the size of like a TMNT Eastman and Laird. Okay. Well, old then, Mirage studios. Number one, that that's yeah, about so, the size they were. So a little bigger than say, you know, about magazine size, you know, the, the Marvel OGNs from the eighties. Right they're about they're all about the same size and 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 you know cbcs cgc they do have slabs for those sized books right it's just for some reason the treasury editions the life magazine size that that's that's a weird size for them because they're doing nintendo cartridges that's why yeah (laughs) and cards and now they're into cards yeah and like and like i think pele said action figures i did an unboxing on one of my shows where uh they were like gi joe figures that were slabbed and it's like i and they have a different grading scale too i think they Mm -hmm. use like uh they go up to 100 or something it's but uh yeah, it's like I don't even know what I'm looking at here. This is so <laughs> foreign to me. <laughs> but it's popular and it's huge, and and you know, when collectors are really, you know, they they want that authenticity and they want that, you know, as close to you know original experience as they can get. So they'll pay I for do, it. I do like finding out that a comic that I've had since I was a kid comes back like a nine four. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I took care of my books. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Uh, mo- most right. of the ones that I've had since I was like five, no, they're like 
No, they're shot. <laughs> yeah, mine no. are I mine don't get a half a grade on some of those. <laughs> So let's uh let's transition from talking about some of the older stuff to to the new kind of comic book collecting market. We know that the comic book industry itself is in a transition period during this moment right now, but the collecting market is as well. And there are so many more factors that can make a comic book more collectible, more uh, valuable over the long term. One of the things that we're seeing Pele is all the the new media that's coming out. When I say new media, streaming services, TV shows movies that are calling back a lot of times to original stories from comic books or appearance, first appearances of characters being introduced in these new mediums are creating new fans and people want you know to go back to the original source material and we're seeing that it is definitely changing the price values on a lot of these this week we just had loki come out in disney plus mm -hmm. yeah he came out yeah, he, <laughs> he, he's coming out as a chick. Uh, and uh, the transition, you know, is not new in the comics. And uh, You wanted, and, to, wanted this picture, right? Yeah, yeah. The, this is the first time that uh, Loki appeared as a woman in comics. Thor Annual number 18. And uh, it was nobody specced on this book. I think I was, I'm the only person I know of that had a whole bunch of copies because I just thought it was neat. You know, I thought it might do something someday. But uh, now we're seeing prices, you know, they went, started, people started buying them at five, did it 10, did it 15. I think we're seeing raw copies now going for 25 plus on eBay. And uh, no graded copies to speak of because Why is that? nobody was grading this thing. Also, Th uh, thanks to Comic Tom, by the way, for these images. Uh, also, the thing about uh, slabbing comic books that are polybagged, they don't do that, right? Mm -hmm. They take them out of the bag. They take yeah. them out of the bag. So uh, <laughs> if you're buying raw copies, it's probably in the bag. That's why, right? Yeah. And the, if you're buying them and they're already and they're still bagged, that's good in a way. But it's also bad because, you know, that bag is not kind to a lot of books. And you're going to yeah. get a lot of weird creasing and... You know, you're going to get a lot of that. There's a there's a card that was that was inserted within the poly bag with the comic, and uh, it presses that poly bag shrinks over time, and that card impression is like permanently welded into the back of the book, back of the book. So you know, you're going to have to get it pressed, and it's a square bound book. So the get pressing, it's going to be challenging. Now, as we the, do, as anybody presses knows. Go ahead, Doc. This this is an interesting example here actually of all the different ways that the collecting market can really look at a book so if you're buying it raw and you're keeping it raw you want it in the bag even though it's damaging the card is damaging it over time but if you're buying it for the investment in the spec and you don't want it you know you're and you're concerned about the grade you want to buy it unbagged and so you have two different approaches kind of from a collector standpoint here. I don't know if I'd want this raw or if I'd want it because you'd want it in the like the people that are buying it raw. They want it as close to the original as it hit the stands as possible. And that includes a bag and a card that is actually damaging the quality of the comic over mm -hmm. time. It's this yep. weird kind of dichotomy here. Yeah, one thing I'm going to end up probably do is I'm going to take the nicest copies I got and uh, press them, get them, get them as nice condition as I possibly can through pressing. They won't need to be cleaned because they're sealed. And uh, send the comic off to be graded and send the card off at the same time. And then I'll sell them as sets. You know, here's the card, here's the comic, here's the card, include it as a set and sell it as one as one unit. Hey, you know so. what CGC needs to do? They need to start grading the poly bags, too. <laughs> <laughs> they can put the poly bag inside of a slab mm -hmm. so you can sell it as a whole set. Here's the comic. Here's the bag. <laughs> here's the card. Three slabs, all different sizes. Why in the hell do you need a bag and a slab? Who the hell cares? It's part of the original thing. That's if you awesome. crack it open, you can put it back together. That's so, awesome. Pele, if you're a comic book collector or a speculator, how important is it for you to keep an eye on the, the source material that they are using to develop these shows like for long-term thinking? Like, 
if, if you knew about this six months ago, you probably should have been getting these things graded already so mm -hmm. that they're hot for the presses and people that are just exploring this stuff or finding out about it in your products right there when, the, when it's hot in the moment, right? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, that's or that ideally. You look for it. Yeah, ideally, yeah. I mean, if I'd have had more insight, I would have already been sending these off to get slabbed. But you know, I I had I had barely enough just to actually get the books themselves. So that's cheap. You know, they're fifty cents a piece or whatever. You know, a dollar a piece, and uh, just put them back. You know, there's a lot more dedication to actually saying, okay, I believe in this enough where I'm going to invest. Thirty dollars a piece <laughs> to get these set off, so it's like that's that's a little bit more of a leap of faith right there. Uh, but uh, it also, like I said, these there's not a lot of these that are in great shape. The, a lot of them are just creased all to hell. Yeah, and you know it's kind of like you said, Pele. Uh, if you don't think that you're going to get anything out of it, it doesn't necessarily mean that there aren't high grade copies of books out there. It just means it's not a key issue. It isn't that important to slab. They're not out there because nobody cared to do it probably also, yeah, possibly. I, th I think you're gonna have, I think what this does though bring up though is a lot of books, it's like from a collector standpoint, from a, a speculator standpoint, is you gotta start looking at what this new media they're gonna do. You have to kind of guess what they're gonna do in the shows and then especially if there's any connection to like casting out other stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah to other source material and then track down what might have previously been obscure non-valuable books like this random annual from like 1993 because i remember that year all of the annuals that year from marvel came with a bag they all came poly bagged with a card in them because uh, that was the first appearance of the Executioner in one of the X-Men annuals. Um, so you kind of have to guess what's going to happen in order to stay ahead of the game because they might draw on something very obscure mm -hmm. that is that you can easily find in dollar bins. And, it, and it's stuff that wasn't previously key. It, it basically, this is almost like a key creator. Um, yeah. m you know, modern yeah. modern media is kind of key creators. Uh, they create keys from Drek. Yeah, I mean, you got your you know you got your key collector app uh, and stuff like that. Those are awesome. Uh, I really I really uh, recommend that one. It's economical to get the subscriber. You don't even have to pay the subscription for it. It's it's good even as a free app. And uh, I, I use it all the time. And uh, there's Facebook's groups that are just, you know, that's all they do. Are these sleuths out there trying to figure out, you know, hey, you know, what's going to be next? What's going to be doing this? Who, what's going to be the next key? Uh, here's another one. Fantastic Four 352, uh, which is the first appearance of the Minutemen, which just made their debut in Loki. And people, they were, they were harping about this like two years ago on key collector app you know and the facebook groups are saying you need to buy this book it's another book that i bought you know like i don't have as many i think i got like 15 or something is that the one with torch on the cover and uh, no it's got reed richards and he's like surrounded by you know these these i want to look these, at it this visual <laughs> you know this visual effect you know and he's like he shows him stretching out and uh it's uh but anyways first appearance uh Time Variance Authority Minutemen and a second full appearance of the Time Variance Authority itself. So, uh, and oh, I remember a news that issue. Yep. And there's a newsstand copy of it that's even more rare. So, mm. I had the newsstand copy because yeah. I bought it at a Woolworth. Nice. So, and apparently, you know, just Woolworth. thinking about the, the, the current comic book collecting market. A lot of speculators have come in. There, there is conflict it appears between comic book collectors and speculators. What's the long term outlook on this this stuff? It doesn't feel like this is going away. What else should people be keeping an eye on? Uh, just uh, the staples, man. Uh, go out and get the 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 keys that are the main characters uh, or the number one of their first ongoing series or something like that. Uh, there's there's so much crap to, and minutia to pick on uh, as far as you know what this is this costume change that kind of stuff all of those are going to gradually increase all of those are going to grow especially in high grade 
if you can't afford a first appearance, not everybody can afford a Marvel Spotlight number five. You know, the first appearance of Ghost Rider. You know, it's awesome book. It's absolutely gorgeous. Even low grade, you know, it's over a thousand bucks. I thought it was. I thought and, Ghost Rider was Spotlight One. What was Spotlight hmm. One? Ma- Marvel Spotlight One was uh, Red Wolf. Yes. Oh, it was. okay. For like oh, four right. or five, yeah, four issues. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. And uh, uh, yeah, Spar- It's it's just a, it's an amazing book. And then you know, then Ghost Rider Number One that came out soon after got to be really expensive. You know, and you kind of back it up and back it up, you know, and what can I afford to buy? And uh, But another one, Marvel Spotlight number six, Marvel Spotlight number seven are still not that expensive, uh, comparatively. And uh, another one... Are there any good tools if people are going through their dollar bin and they're like, is this an important comic book? Is there something where they can just throw it in there and you can see if there's a first appearance or, or whatever? Keep app. Keep collector app. Yeah, they do it you all just the put time in the title. The yep, the title, and you just put in the title, put in the issue number, and it'll... This is the first appearance of blah blah blah. You know, this is the first appearance of of uh, Lobo. And it's daughter. not just going to be characters; it's going to be ideas or settings or organizations, plot Sometimes. device, plots that are involved in the comic, stuff like that. Rumor that somebody's going to be in a movie. Rumor. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know. And they'll tell you this is a rumor. This is yeah. no, you know, we have no proof of this. This is just, you know, could happen. And uh, it's a great app. We should get them as a sponsor. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, we should get them as a sponsor because I really like. If you are from from the app and you want to sponsor the program, absolutely, we are interested. Yeah, yeah, because I, I really have respect for those guys. Geek they they do app. a great job. Yeah, sure. Geek's Fantastic call. Comics has an account. <laughs> West Dicks Comics at Gmail dot com, or you could uh, find these wonderful gentlemen at their comic shops. Yeah, they're they're amazing. They're amazing company, and uh, I really like they do. They they really do work those guys and uh i uh i i salute them for their diligence in going out and looking for keys so i uh, i like it uh, um but at the same time oh god there's a lot of the old school fans that i mean there's also people like me that i i like it and i hate it at the same time because a mm-hmm. book goes on there that's been sitting on my want list for a little while and mm-hmm. all of a sudden i'm paying an extra 20, 30, 50, 100 percent in yep. in the matter of weeks. And yep. and it could be over a pure rumor. And, yep. and I get that, but it's it's kind of like a like we've always had that in comics from collector standpoint. You know, if something you hear about it from a friend of a friend of a friend or wizard would make some message of it or some some article speculating on something, um, you know, bleeding stool or really anywhere um they they would they would make some you know they there'd be a story about something that was pure speculation and you'd see a little bit of a of a price bump but now it's all centralized basically if it's not in key collector it's not real and if it is in key collector there is going to be a big bump in price yeah, and people do get mad about that too. There's, there's a lot of, there, not a lot. There's some people out there that are mad because, oh my gosh, you're driving up the values of these comics, and we can't afford to buy them. So just calm down. Listen, you had thirty years, bro. Yeah, really. Yeah. Take a deep breath. What happens typically for these comics is there'll be a spike. There'll be a, a shock to the system, and that value will go up a hundred, two hundred, three hundred percent, and it'll just soar. And then once it equalizes and things calm down that price comes back down it's not as cheap as it was before but it never but it but it really cools off quite a bit and they your opportunity to get in and buy on it and then when the actual thing happens that's you know that they were talking about before that book's going to spike up and you're not going to you know be able to buy it cheap again so it's usually don't buy it on the initial news or the initial rumor wait till it cools off then buy it then when the real news comes out, you'll have your key and, and you'll be able to you'll be sitting pretty with it. So That's speaking my of keys, this week it sounds like there might be three new keys that came out. I want to talk about some of the, the things that are on the speculators' minds. Yule this week, I believe it's in TMNT 117. We did we get the first reappearance of Venus to Milo in IDW TMNT? 
Oh, I know there geez. was a little buzz about that. I don't know that one. Uh, I got to admit, because I'm stupid <laughs> when it comes to the turtle stuff. I thought you were the one that was reading that stuff lately. No, I stopped reading it as soon as, um, well, in the lead up to the end of City at War. And then I Sophie, see. Sophie Campbell took over. I gave it a few issues and it was going nowhere. Is that, no. do you think that's uh, something that people should be watching, Pele? A reintroduction yeah, I, of a character, even if they weren't all that popular? Yeah. I mean, it's going to, it's going to cause some spike you know uh the prices are going to drift up a bit but yeah she was such a controversial character that you know i i just don't know now uh, she's just, the third female turtle in i know <laughs> i know it's like uh, I don't we've know. already got jenica we've got lita and we've got venus de milo returning there's a lot of turtle females you know i think they're trying to get as many females as there were original turtles Swap. I think they're so trying four. to get the cancel the the series canceled, but that's yeah, just my thought. I think that too. <laughs> they're well, ready for <laughs> maybe that will be a book in the future, uh, especially well, if the print run in you know as things maybe in the wind future. down. Also, yeah, exactly. But as far as spec wise, I give it about a D, a C okay. minus. Yeah, it's there's it's another kind of, book it's out there. there. Web of Spider Man, something I'm not interested in because it's based on like a, a theme park ride, whatever. But we do get the introduction of the boy from Iron Man 3 makes his Marvel Comics debut as a member of whatever this Tony Stark school that that uh, he's he's being debuted and apparently he's part of the ride. Yeah, where that's uh, I, nobody was talking about it really at the shop. I think uh, a couple of people were. I won't say nobody. Uh, but uh, I just don't, you know, it's kind of like a comic based on the MCU character, you know, and uh, he was in the in-game funeral scene. Yes, so, so uh, yeah, I mean... Uh, well, there's always that rumor that he was going to be the replacement for right. Tony Stark Iron Man. I don't think that's going to come to fruition. No, but he could be like a, a new you know, recurring character, you know, for the series. So, well, not then a I bad... guess it would be important... But again, it'd be like farther down the line, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah five years or so down yeah, the line, and you see, oh, this is that guy, and he's a scientist working for AIM now. Oh my God, you know, or he works for Stark Industries, or <clears throat> you know, and uh, you know, it could be, could be anything. Uh, but yeah, if it's you know, this is fairly inexpensive. You know, just buy it for cover price and put it back. You know, I don't, you know, it's not the no last, harm no foul. The last one I saw was in Batman Urban Legends. The very last page, we've heard this character talked about. This is the villain behind the story, but we finally saw the first appearance. I believe his name is Cheer. They didn't refer to him by name, but I think that's the name of the villain. He has a Joker vibe to him. He's got a, a smiley face painted on him. Uh, black and yellow design. Good color. Don't know if it's the greatest design ever. Is this a character that, that we think we'll be seeing? Apparently. Yeah, but the monthly, the Batman. They're doing so many new Batman characters. Oh, my oh God. It's so painful. Ridiculous. But... I like him. I like the way he looks. Uh, yeah, I think that he's probably going to be recurring, unlike a lot of these, you know, villain of the month, villain of the every two weeks. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, another, I'd probably put this one at the highest of the three uh, because it's Definitely probably the most expensive book. I think it's eight, eight dollars to seven. What are they? Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's, I think it's already, I think it's already like, trading at 15 bucks on ebay for a near mint copy so you know it's it's already starting to move a little bit and uh probably you'll settle around 20 bucks or something like that maybe more and uh later on down the line if he gets keeps coming back more and more and more uh then uh yeah be a good little book to have on your hands uh but uh i give us from the highest one i give us about a b minus Mm -hmm. so it's batman related the character does have a, a more striking design he stands out in a crowd for certain yeah yeah so we, we're talking about kind of some of the hotter stuff that's in comics right now there's a question out there and we definitely want to hear from the viewers should there be a slab and raw like twitter account or maybe an instagram where we can talk about these things throughout the week before we get to these actual videos and maybe uh, have start forming a little community around this collecting collecting stuff uh, I, I wouldn't be running that when I run the Thinking Critical uh, mm -hmm. Twitter, but we could create another account and just talk about these things. Definitely let us know uh, your opinions on that. I know, Paley, is that you were the one that was interested in that, I believe? Yeah, Instagram, I think. I think a, I think a Slabbed and Raw Instagram account would be pretty awesome. And we could, like, you know, post our 
you know, post new books that come in. We could post in, you know, what we think as far as uh, do spec books, uh, do ideas. And you would ideas. have to email in your, your information to get us through your pictures. You could just go to the Instagram and drop them. Yeah, yeah. Just you know, ta- just put it in, you know, tag us in there, and uh, we'll, uh, you know, we'll give you our thumbs up and stuff like that and talk about your submissions, talk about what you, you know, books are you think are awesome and new keys and stuff like that, or old keys, preferably. And uh, we'll, uh, you know, We'll just we'll we just can, hook up together. We'll just hook up through Instagram. It's it's you uh, it's, can be like, Cheers just appeared in Batman Urban Legends. Did you see it? <laughs> Did you see it? Did you see this? Oh this God. character is important. Get that comments. <laughs> you know, so, going back to that Batman thing really quick, uh yeah, they create new characters all the time, but it is Batman, so Yeah. <laughs> do, do, yeah. Dollar store knockoff Joker not really interested yeah but the thing is is like as we've said you know what with the every all these medium not about harley quinn's pretty hot yeah Yeah. and i mean she's cooling down a bit but you know uh 10 years a new gotham series it's punchline uh it's cheer it's it's ghost ghost maker uh, ghost maker yeah you know (laughs) you know it doesn't uh, the thing so, I like about them is that it's it's uh, it's less time I need to spend with the Joker. He can kind of stew again, and like become big, and we can have all these other characters in the comic books, and then hopefully uh, re- represented on screen also. You know what's popping so right I, now is that '70s Joker series. You know the the the, the yeah, old is. old Joker series that has the aqua colored, you know, the blue green colored cover man that's gone crazy mm-hmm. that has absolutely gone nuts i had like 10 copies of it you know some of them in high grade all gone in like two weeks that by, series is gone by bananas the, by the time right, anybody Doc. gives a shit by the time anybody gives a shit about these characters it'll be about the 21st uh batman show without <laughs> batman because they're real good at that well, it's, it's not about whether or not the batman shows are good it's about whether or not these are or speculation worthy did you you were trying to jump in? I don't know if you had another point before we talk about Johnny J and Boogie's comments. Wrap this nope, up. nope, that was it. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> so Johnny J and Boogie sent these in to us. Hopefully, if we get this in- Instagram coming up, we can go there and maybe take some examples of you know uh, uh, things to look out for when you're collecting. I think he just wanted to show off his collection here, Pele. Yeah. He's got some hot stuff on this first picture. That's nice. You know, it, it's nice to have a good. It's a nice modern collection. Uh, there's some, you know, some bronze up there at the top, uh, and uh, you know, you got your nine eight, New Mutants ninety eight, GI Joe number one. That's a that's a smoking hot book right now. You know, a book that was worth two hundred bucks in a nine eight list three four years ago, and now it's like pushing up to eighteen hundred, eighteen hundred two thousand dollars. You know, Transformers number one has been hot for a while. And uh, nine eight just keeps soaring and soaring. Uh, that Wolverine number one, it's gotten hot, hot lately again. And uh, nine eight, you know, this is pushing eight hundred bucks now, six hundred, six hundred, eight hundred, depending on some factors. But uh, what do you Doc, think? Do you want that Wolverine number one? Or do you have I already that? have. I already have like three copies. Of that. Do you have I a just don't have any of them. I, I don't have any graded. I, mm-hmm. I, but I but I'm pretty sure if I set one of them off, I get a nine six on at least one of them. Mm-hmm. Now I am a little jealous of his New Mutants ninety eight nine point eight because I only have a nine six. That's yeah yeah that's uh, I've got uh, I've got look at that cover. Oh, they yeah. don't make them like that anymore. Look at that. No, I love that. Uh, it's one of those Rob, books that I got the newsstand and the direct and uh, and I, I think my direct is a nine eight. And I never got the newsstand graded. So. That Captain America is ruining that cover, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I said that. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's just like it's boom right there. <laughs> Poor boom boom. <laughs> right, Should we look at the next ones? What are you thinking about this, Yule? Oh, these are great. Uh, oh, yeah. The one that stands out the most to me, actually, is that uh, second Transformers. I'm assuming that's a later issue. And a nine, I mean, number one, collecting past the mini series or like the first five issues of the regular. And that is that how it went? It went mini series, regular series. Um, yeah. Yeah. It went uh, for, it's going to be a four. And they're like, this is doing really well. We're just going to keep going. We're just going to yeah, keep that, going. Do you mean they a lot of those, off with a new number one? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, was, what was amazing is 
what what's not am- not amazing, but what's interesting is that those late late issues of Transformers had just low print runs that they have become super valuable. And yeah. Same with, same with the late Joes. Yeah. With, oh, actually, we see that with a lot of things, um, even titles that aren't as uh, as popular as GI Joe, um, Valiant. When they had uh, Magnus Robot Fighter and Exo Man of War, as the ser- before it became a claim, uh, a lot of those last issues are very very hard to get your hands on, uh, and then if people cared about condition, it will probably be a big deal too someday. But and some spawns that had like seventy five hundred issues, spawn, you know, yeah, totally eight thousand issues, you know, in a spawn copy. Nobody likes that com. ASM three hundred that we're seeing there. Seeing I know it. It's all the way back there. I don't even see the graph. I think it's, I think nine, it's nine, nine, the nine, next six. one. Nine six. Is it on the next page? Or I think the it's next on the next. Will it's on yeah. the next. Oh, it is. It's a nine six. Okay, there was another angle. I, I am. That's I'm still pretty little, dope. I'm a yeah, little jealous. I'm a little jealous of the the Secret Wars, uh, eight nine point eight because that's a gorgeous book, but mm. I'm definitely jealous of the uh, ASM three hundred because. I keep putting it off, and I don't have one. It just keeps, it just keeps raising in price. Also, I, know. Yeah. I mean, that's I the know. problem. Thousands of dollars now for a nine six nine eight, you know, and and crazy. There's, and there's like three hundred, four hundred thousand copies of it out there. It's the same thing with Secret Wars eight. They're out yeah. there. Somebody has a box full of eights surrounded by all the other issues you know <laughs> i just don't think they survived i don't think there's close to that many i think that a lot of them got mulched i think uh, that might be them, true you know i, I think that especially in high grade it's hard it's legitimately hard to find a crease free copy of asm 300 because people read it and the people that didn't read it you know those comics were destroyed yeah. so you know it's it's especially the newsstand the newsstand of that is nuts it is legitimately nuts to find in high grade and uh, four grand, five thousand dollars. I think I saw six thousand dollars for a nine point eight newsstand, you know, and it's climbing. And uh, is there a difference? I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Hey, they should he look into getting those top three comics graded? Oh, sure. Slap. Yeah, I can't tell the grade right here, but uh, if it's if it's if he's so inclined, I mean, it's uh, they won't well, it's they're. They're, I don't know if they're they're not really keys, but they look great. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm choice. assuming they're not in as uh, nine. They're not in the nine condition no. range. Probably they're probably just you know display pieces. Yeah, yeah. that Star Wars display. cover is great too. That now, yeah. so I was going to ask that Star Wars cover is uh, it's a newsstand edition. Is there a big deal on the fact that it's newsstand or um, easier to find? Easier to find back then yeah. in the early. Well, late seventies, yeah. Yeah, the direct mm-hmm. copy was hard to find of those. It's harder, harder to find, mm-hmm. and uh, but uh, anything in a near mint in that book is hard to find. And so, even and I, I want to let people know, even those reprints that are out there of Star Wars number one, the first six issues, those are valuable also. I Whitman, mean, they're not cheap yeah. books in in high grade at yeah, all. There's a, yeah, there's a Whitman reprint that's hard to find. And, I just. Uh, Ooh, a I just one. I just went and looked. Yeah. I'm like, okay, what was the cover price? Because I know that there was a cover price variant of Star 35. Wars one. It was 35. I couldn't remember if it was a 25 to 30 or 30 to 35. It was. It's 35 cent price variant. So that's just the standard, but it's still a newsstand. Um, but you're in the early news. You're in the early days of the direct market. So I think actually the direct market would have been more yeah. rough to find yeah yeah that's what Pele said so great great collection thank you so much johnny j and boogie really appreciate you you sending these pictures in so we could take a look and admire your collection please send these these uh pictures in if you have us questions about grading whether or not you you uh the panel not me you don't want my opinion whether or not maybe you should get something graded if something's been you know uh maybe trimmed a little bit if there's been some type of alteration we can have a look at that Pele does that stuff all the time and we will do our best looking at the pictures hopefully we get that uh some feedback on the slabbed and raw instagram page and maybe we'll get that up and running soon bellas i think this is going to do it for episode number two does anyone have anything else to say no i'm looking forward to maybe moving to live streaming you know getting some getting some you know instant feedback and getting you know talking to people and in the chat you know and uh 
you know, I think that I think that'd be fun. So we're going to see how that works, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. then pictures. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, comic more, book pictures. More, more <laughs> shelf porn. More shelf porn. More shelf porn. Yeah, we All like right. it. Later, everybody. Bye. Take care, guys.